What's a what's a what's the classic computer brand that everybody here has? Apple, right? So wait till the next time you get into a presentation like this, and somebody will have an Apple computer. What is staring you in the face the whole time? The logo. Facing whom? You. Usually backlit, right? So the whole time you're sitting there, that's just burning into your retina, right? There's no language involved, so it doesn't say Dell, you know, so the, or this thing. This is a company issue. Black, Darth Vader, Luke, I am your father, right? <laughs> Model. Little tiny IBM logo here facing me. And IBM thought so much of this business that it did what? Sold it. You know, but they, they, it's based on this myth that you can't network Apple computers. Well, that was the myth, but... But that's classic branding. So you think of Apple, well, even let's think of Apple. What do you think of when you think of Apple? iPod. Fun. I, I got it, I get, sorry, I get very worked up about this. iPod is a classic example. We don't have time. Maybe another time we'll talk about this. But there's a key marketing concept which is called insights. Insight is a deep understanding about you as an individual. So personal that if somebody then talks about it or communicates an insight, the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you think, wow, they're talking right at me. Now the iPod is based on an insight. And insights are not usually about products. So that's usually called a faux insight. You know, I've always wanted it, but no, that's, that's not a real insight. But the iPod is based on an insight. Does anybody know what that insight is? Because you're the target audience. What's the insight? What does the iPod allow you to do? This is the audience participation part. Right? Music anyway. Pardon me? Music Whose music? music? Bingo. It's your music. So my girls are not that much older than you are, and I saw it very early because they used to make these tapes, right? You're probably asking what are tapes, right? <laughs> and, but they would make little tapes, right? They would record the music from the radio, but they would put the music in their order. It was their music. It wasn't like they had this record. I, you don't know, you know what records are, right? <laughs> so it wasn't like you get the White Album and you'd say, who's this George Martin? Well, how did he decide these songs should be in this order? I don't want to listen to all Beatles songs. I want to listen to other stuff. I want it mixed in. That's the magic of the iPod. That's what it's based on. It may not be the best. You're, you're maybe sort of high-tech people. You may say, well, it's not even the best MP3. It doesn't matter. It isn't the best. It's not even their technology. It's not even new technology. But they put it together. And then they put the music with it, right? The iTunes. You're probably thinking, gosh, I didn't. Sorry, I have to pay for it. We had Napster. I didn't have to pay for any of this stuff. All right, but, but then real people like me that would have to pay for it, right? So but that's an insight, and that's a powerful brand, and it's consistent with that image. So anyway, so that's a brand, and that's a key thing in marketing.